Hey folks, this is Kalani. Welcome back to the Castle Nathria raid guide for Normal and Heroic. In this video, we'll be taking down Sire de Nathrius. This fight consists of three phases and an intermission phase, so it's going to be a long one. Every player in your raid will start the fight with four stacks of Burden of Sin. This deals constant damage over time and will be very important throughout the entire phase. On Heroic Mode, just to make things a teeny bit harder, everyone starts with five stacks instead. To remove Burden of Sin, you have to get hit by the boss's Cleansing Pain ability. This is a frontal cone that deals a lot of damage and removes one stack of Burden of Sin from any player hit. This ability also spawns an ad for each player hit that deals constant AoE damage, so you have to AoE them down as quickly as possible. If you ever have zero stacks of Burden of Sin, this ability will one-shot you, so don't ever stand in it when you have no more stacks to clear. You have to be careful who clears their Burden of Sins though. When the boss uses his Blood Price ability, he will pick up the entire raid and deal a huge amount of damage. But the damage is dependent on how many players have the same stacks of Burden of Sin. If your entire raid has four stacks when Blood Price is cast, you all die. If the entire raid has three stacks, you still all die. You get the picture. To deal with this combination of abilities, split your raid in half. Half of your raid should get hit by the first Cleansing Pain by stacking on the tank with aggro, and then the other half of the raid should get hit by the second Cleansing Pain, once again by stacking on the tank with aggro. If you alternate which half of the raid is hit by each Cleansing Pain, half should have one stack count, while the other half has a different stack count. This will make the damage from Blood Price significantly lower, so you can all survive. If Blood Price is ever one shotting your raid, it's because you're not staggering your Burden of Sin stacks properly. The boss also has a special ability called Inevitable. If he is ever unable to reach his target, Denathrius will teleport to their location and deal some extra damage, so you cannot get away no matter how hard you try. And then you also have the Feeding Time ability to deal with. Several raid members will be marked with a red arrow and red circle that deals a lot of damage and heals the boss. Take these out of the group so no one else gets hit. On Heroic Mode, this ability turns into the Night Hunter ability. Several players will be marked in the same way, but an image of the boss will appear and charge towards their target. You can see the big red line. Anyone in the circle will take a large amount of damage, but the damage is reduced if other players soak the initial charge. So you have to stand in the red lines to reduce the damage the marked players take. The damage dealt by this ability also heals the boss, so no one else should be in the red circles. Stand in the red lines, don't stand in the red circles. Each player also can't soak more than one red line at a time. If you do, you'll just get one shot. So only soak one line, but make sure there are enough players in each red line so the marked targets don't die. When the boss gets to 100 energy, he will cast Command Ravage. The floating sword in the middle of the room blasts one third of the room with Anima, dealing a huge amount of damage and preventing you from standing in that zone. The boss also gains 10% increased damage every time Ravage is cast, and after three Ravages, the entire room will be covered and you will quickly wipe. So you have to get the boss to 70% health before the third Ravage. At 70% health, you will trigger the first transition. Everyone will be picked up and thrown to the edge of the room. You have to make it towards the middle, but don't try jump down the gap. You can't use any abilities in this intermission, and your movement speed is slowed for each stack of Burden of Sin you still have. If you don't clear your stacks in the first phase properly, you won't be able to reach the middle of the room in time. If you don't get to the middle before the intermission ends, you will instantly die. If you do manage to get to the middle, you'll be pulled into the room below. There are four mirrors in this room, and if you run through one mirror, you pop out on the other side of the room. This can be very useful for quick positioning and dodging mechanics. You can get knocked off this platform by a variety of abilities, so stay on your toes. You'll start this phase with several Crimson Cabalist adds, and more will spawn as the fight continues. Some are on the platform that you are on and can be attacked by melee, but some are actually off to the side and can only be attacked by ranged. Ranged should always prioritize the far targets to kill them quickly, and for each ad alive, the entire raid takes constant damage, so it's important to kill ads quickly when they pop up. On Heroic Mode, when these adds die, they will fling Anima at every player's location that deals damage and knocks you back. Make sure you dodge this. 
Denathrius will also cast Racking Pain. This is a frontal cone on the tank with aggro, which deals a lot of damage and applies a debuff to the tank that increases their damage taken by 50% for 24 seconds. This debuff can also be applied to the Cabalist adds, so you should face the boss towards them so they get hit as well, and your DPS can nuke them down faster. You will need to tank swap after every cast. The boss will also periodically use Hand of Destruction, who will pull all players to his location and conjure an image that explodes after 6 seconds. The explosion deals fall off damage, so make sure you run away. We found it very useful tanking the boss next to a mirror, so when this ability is cast everyone can just run through the mirror to safety and then come back to the boss, but as long as you get out of the AoE you should be fine. You can also directly damage Remoria, the sword, in this phase, and any damage she takes will be shared with Denathrius, so be sure to cleave and multi-dot where possible. Remoria needs to be tanked by whoever doesn't have Denathrius, and her melee attacks and all abilities apply stacks of Carnage. This deals damage over time, so make sure you keep everyone healed up. Remoria will also use Impale, she'll mark random targets with an arrow and dash between them, dealing damage to anyone in her path. Anyone marked should get out of the raid, and other players shouldn't stand between marked players to make sure only the marked targets are hit by this ability. When the boss gets to 100 energy in this phase, he'll use Command Massacre. Remoria hops into the middle of the room and disappears. The room gets dark and massive red lines appear all over the platform. Do not stand in these. Massive swords blast through the area, dealing a massive amount of damage. This ability looks amazing, but it will tear your raid to shreds if people can't dodge. On heroic mode, getting hit by Massacre or Impale will leave an AoE on the floor, so avoid these abilities whenever you can and don't stand in any puddles. When you get the boss down to 40% health, phase 3 stars. Any leftover Kabbalist adds teleport to the middle and apply a healing reduction debuff on the entire raid. The more adds you have, the higher this is going to be, so if you have any adds left, nuke them down as quickly as you can. The boss will disable all of the mirrors and create a maelstrom of anima around the outside of the room. You have to stay in the middle of the platform, otherwise you will die. The boss will continue to use Hand of Destruction, so be sure to get out of this quickly to avoid excess raid damage. And in this last phase, Denathrius wields Remoria directly. He attacks 25% slower, but his attacks deal 50% more damage and apply the Scorn debuff, which deals damage over time. You'll need to tank swap every 4-5 to five stacks. He will also use Shattering Pain. He attacks his current target rapidly and finishes with a raid-wide AoE blast that deals a lot of damage and knocks everyone back. Don't stand near the edges or you will get knocked off. You also need to watch out for Fatal Finesse. This marks several players with a big red circle which deals AoE damage and damage over time. Take these out of the raid so only the marked player gets hit. On heroic mode, this ability will leave behind an anima orb that explodes after 10 seconds. You have to have players soak that orb to reduce the raid-wide damage, otherwise they will wipe you instantly. And finally, at 100 energy, Denathrius will use Sinister Reflection. This will either cast Massacre or Ravage. It seems to always cast Massacre first, then Ravage, and continually rotate between the two. If you get a third Ravage, the room will be covered in anima, just like the first phase, and you will wipe. So that's your Enrage timer right there. On Heroic mode, these Massacres will still drop puddles on the floor if you get hit, so be sure to avoid the big red lines. And that's all you should need to take down Sire Denathrius on normal and heroic. And that's it, a complete guide for every single boss in the Castle Nathria raid. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to everyone who subscribed on Twitch. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to catch us live, pop on over to twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We do a bunch of stuff as well as stream on Mythic Progression raids. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.